speaker agrees? Yeah, give me one minute. But we give him one minute. Can they hear us? In the and we're live again. Okay, and great. And we're live. We're back. Uh, uh, sorry for that glitch, but in this position, what I was going to say is, why g those pawns on b3 and b4 may not look so menacing, and in truth, they're not. But the, the, the nice part about such pawns is they can leverage, uh, the screen, like rook The screen has to be, go a little bit to the left, I think. Ah. So we can see what's happening on the h file. You, mean, you need an attitudinal adjustment. <laughs> uh, in this position, what I was looking at for Sergey was the move F2, F4. Do we have... Yeah, we have uh, another winner coming in. Can we uh, give him a, and a big round of applause, I think? I have a microphone for him. If Wesley So is going to join us, this is marvelous news indeed. Wesley but So. But I was going to say, just in that game, there was F4. Yeah. For for Sergey, and that looked really good for the white player. Well, uh, can we get a big round of applause for Wesley? So is he here? Big round of applause, Wesley. Hi, congratulations. Come and take a seat. Hey, congratulations. Can I give you this mic? Ah, the other is leaving. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you feel? Great game. I was very happy, very pleased with today's game. Was it a what? What kind of game was? Did you get your preparation on the board? Well, I ha had some ideas, but uh, it's impossible to to win out of the opening. It's very hard to get an advantage these days, even with the white pieces. So I just wanted to. I have my ideas of what setup I was gonna play, mm -hmm. which is to fan chat to my bishop on g2. Okay. But then I wasn't really sure which variation he would play. <clears throat> because I played this line with white before, and Radek too, I mean Radoslav. So he has given a check here, but then he just decided to play the main line. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah, I played before castling, mm -hmm. but then decided to just play queen c2. C5, castling, knight C6 takes D4. And this line is very complicated, so um, I wasn't really expecting that much because objectively black should have a good position. Yeah, okay. Is it, uh, so Yasser pointed out that you uh, play the Grunfeld a lot when playing black? Is it, yes. this is a white Grunfeld type of position? Is that what you were aiming for? Hmm, I didn't realize that it's similar to the Grunfeld. Yeah, it's the other hmm. color. It's reversed. <laughs> Who? What do you think of it now? <laughs> ah, Things start well. to make sense. Okay, that's good. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grunfeld with the queen on C2. Yeah. Normally, well, that's the your extra tempo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That, I didn't see that. <laughs> but yeah, I like the Grunfeld with black. But here. <clears throat> so he just played normal moves. A5. I mean, Radoslav is very, very good in the openings, so he made the best moves here. Rook d1, e5, knight c3. I mean, black has many options in every move. He can, for example, play knight d7 so that he will take on c5 with the knight. <coughs> And Were you planning knight? I'm not, not sure. A4? Knight a4 or knight e4? Probably black is fine either yeah. way. Because let's say here, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. And then if knight g5, then just g6. <coughs> and black should be completely fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But. <clears throat> but here he started spending a lot of time, so takes, then knight d5, which uh, kind of tricky move, but black should be fine either yeah. way. So I'm threatening bishop g5, we played, and also knight g5. <coughs> so I played a6, bishop d2, and here he cannot take the pawn, because if he takes, 
C takes D5, Queen D5. I have Knight G5. Nice move, Knight G5, yeah. Yeah, they're attending mate. And he still has D3, but then I just take, and white is, is better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does he have any more moves here? No. <coughs> here? Mm. No, right? Probably not. Queen D4, Bishop E3, yeah, no, this yeah. is all done. Yeah. Anyway, played A4, Bishop G4 is also good here. Mm. Just to develop the pieces. So black should be completely fine. Anyway, he played a4, bishop b4. So, so you, you keep saying black is completely fine. Do you feel at this point black is still fine or do you have an edge? I feel a4 might give me some small chances. Right. I think bishop g4 is easier. Mm -hmm. But when you play a4, bishop b4, I still have the feeling black should be completely fine. But it's not as easy now yeah. because he cannot play b6 because it opens the long diagonal. So his option is uh, knight d7. <coughs> but then it prevents his bishop from developing, so it's not yeah. as clear. Well, if bishop d6, then I can take and win this a pawn. Oh, yeah. So it's not as clear. After a long tank, he went takes, a b4, knight d5, b takes c5. So I have to take his bishop there. Mm -hmm. And then here, when, I mean, this is all relatively forced because I have to play queen d2 to attack a knight. If queen e4, then he just plays rook e8. And if I take, he probably just wins a piece. So it's all fourth. But then... B4 must be a nice move to play. Yeah, well, it's, I think it's the only move. Otherwise, black is completely fine. But my opponent said that he missed B4. Oh, okay. Maybe he was expecting E3. But then if E3, black might even play D3. And then E4, F5. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so he said he missed B4. So you played B4, and yeah. what happened? Did he got scared? Well, he didn't show it, but he just okay. used a lot of time. <laughs> That's a way of showing it. So I, I think, though, that bishop e6 is still equalizes for black. <clears throat> the difference between bishop e6 and queen e7 is here. He attacks my pawn very quickly, while my queen is busy defending this b4 pawn. And so black should be completely fine because uh, I have to play b5. But if I play here, for example, then he just plays e4. And then he has a very quick initiative. Oh, yeah. So I think bishop e6 would is a good move here. <laughs> Exclamation point. Yeah, yeah, I think this. But he played here. <coughs> and queen b2. My idea is simple. I just want to play... Uh, something like this, either rook a3 and rook a1, or knight d2 followed by b5. Yeah, yeah. So you, uh, oh, I see Magnus, draw. the game of Magnus finished. What happened there, you think? I said draw. Oh, a draw. Well, that uh, seemed to be an exciting game. A draw, that's good for you, right, for your tournament lead? Means you're one point ahead of Magnus now. Yeah, a loss would have been better, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take the draw. This is a true champion. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just joking. Anyway, you're kind of joking, not really. Oh, yeah. Rookie one. So yeah, I think I just played normal moves here. Rookie one, because you want to move your knight to to d2. D2, yeah. And if it takes, I probably would take with this e pawn. And then later, I can open this diagonal f4. And these pawns are not going anywhere. And for example, queen c7, I might even consider rook a3, followed by simple rook a1. Oh, yeah. Anyway, rook fd8. Um, what is it? Knight d2. Mm, then use a lot of time again. 
Maybe D3 is interesting. And then I can either take or I can play E3. That's hard to say. <coughs> he played bishop E6. So he just wants to play F5 followed by E4 to block my bishop. Mm -hmm. But so decide to force matters with B5. Mm, knight B8, queen B4. And here I feel I'm slowly starting to get in control. Yeah. Because in many cases, I simply win a pawn. Yeah, you just win B7 or A4. Yeah, played F5. And here I spent a lot of time because at first I wanted to take. <coughs> but knight B3 is stronger, I believe. Mm -hmm. So when I spotted knight B3, I was very pleased. And then I spent a bit more time just to double check. So knight B3, I think it's a nice move. The point no. is that black doesn't have much things to do because he cannot play B6 as the rook on A8 is pinned. And if he moves the knight, then B7 is falling. Well, if he plays rook A7, it's just wasted you just, time. Yeah, take, yeah. So he probably should play E4. Takes, 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 knight D7. My opponent also saw this, but he didn't like C6. Hmm. So maybe it's bad for black. So knight B3 is a good move. Just for the audience, you're giving exclamation marks yeah. uh, to, your game, to your moves. That's good. Because That's if good. I don't have knight B3, I think the win is not as easy. For example, here, one nice thing is if he plays a3, so the idea is if I take twice here, then c4 then is c4. hanging. But I think I have knight a5. And even a position like this, for example, takes, 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 oops, takes. Maybe this is good for white with his three pass pawns. Yeah, the pawns seem really strong. Yeah, and I put my life on the, those pawns. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so knight d7 just losses. Because takes, yep. rook b8, takes. So yeah, here's two pawns down. Yeah, and, and here you the, saw the, the line. Then very happy win. Yeah, yeah that's, if that's he plays a... here, I even have c7. Oh yeah, nice fork. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the pawns did the job. Well, congratulations. Really a nice victory. Let's see, you put the final position on the board. <coughs> see if yeah. B6. So you're on plus four now, right? Um, Seven yeah. out of... And uh, what are your plans for the rest of the tournament? Well, well, you just Tomorrow is a rest day. So uh, my plan is just to enjoy why I can say. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, that's definitely easy, right? Uh, that's yeah, the greatest town on earth. <laughs> so, uh, no, but, uh, <laughs> and also you seem like you don't need a rest day. I feel like you, you seem so uh, energized and you play, the, the play seems to come very easy to you. Is that oh, true? Thank you. Well, um, I, I also felt a little tired, you know, this is the longest tournament in the world. <laughs> and <laughs> I played a couple of bad games in this tournament, so a rest day is always... Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's Needed. That's good. Then I uh, heard your your uh, yeah your last rounds are Andraikin, Bay, uh, Yi, and Napo. Yes. Uh, is that a good program? Mm. <laughs> Hard to say. Okay, no, I, no comment. I'd prefer if I play you, you, and you instead of. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I would like that too. Uh, <laughs> no, and uh, and also, what are your goals for? You had a great year last year. What are your goals for this year? You're in the live rating like 28, 20 right now. You're really winning so many games. Do you have your eyes on the world championship, or what's the goal? Well, I feel it's too early to say. Um, just my goal is just to play well, um, just to improve, and maybe one day we'll get. We'll talk about a world championship, but uh, but right now it's too too early to say because playing well for three or four tournaments doesn't mean that you're gonna get there. But first of all, I have to qualify to the candidates. 
uh, I can either do that by rating or through the World Cup. So, uh, but, but just in case you're getting a very high rating now, so that's good, right? <laughs> yeah, it can, can be bad, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I got many tournaments this year, so after this I have the US Championships in, in March, and then I have uh, Norway in uh, June, and also the Grand Chester tournaments this year, which is going to be uh, four or five tournaments. So, and of course, uh, Magnus will be there. So it will be uh, very exciting because I learned a lot from playing with him. And uh, it, I think it will be an exciting year and hopefully better than the last one. Yeah, <laughs> even better. And, and do you feel Magnus is already getting to be a little scared of you? <laughs> Do you feel that when you walk past his game, he's like, oh, Wesley? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but he, no. Well, not so much. No, but well, yeah, I just want to play well uh, every game. Not <laughs> well, you're definitely <laughs> doing that. Michael. So, Well, thanks a lot for showing the game and a uh, beautiful uh, victory and good luck on the rest of the tournament. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you. Wesley So. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Well, that certainly was an impressive victory. And we just had Levan Aronian on. His game seemed easy in a tactical way, but this game also, uh, the way Wesley talks about it, makes it seem like an easy game chess, which uh, I'm sure all the viewers at home and in the audience think, no, isn't. It's not an easy game. Let's see, the Carlsa game ended in a draw. We left it at Rook D3. Are we on pros? Or are yes, we not? sir, welcome back. Well, thank you, thank you. Welcome back. You there would love this. I was just speaking with Wesley, and Wesley says, the man who was interviewing me, Tex, is he a good chess player? He seemed to know something. <laughs> he seemed to know something, okay. He seemed to know something. Is he a good chess player? Well, yeah. My said, mother thinks I am. Yes, yes, yes. And, and the neighbor. <laughs> and very the neighbor. Important. And my yeah. dog. <laughs> my dog. What happened? I saw that the players agreed to draw. They agreed to a draw. And I thought it was one of those yeah, you, positions all that... Your tactical senses were going, right? right? Going crazy. So let's see. He played Rook C2, the move you also... Uh, well, that was the really default well. option, right? Take, take. Yes. B3. Oh, okay. that's kind of a blocking move. Stopping the rook from yeah, capturing okay. on B2. You yes. see it getting more drawish now, right? Yes, it's going sure. into this rook ending. So we have to promote the pawn. Queen! Rook oh. takes, rook takes. Draw. The, uh, the bodies are being removed. Draw? Yeah, three versus three. Yeah. Well, okay. you win some, you draw some. Exactly. Sometimes in chess, <laughs> you win some, you draw some. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes in chess, you know, a small mistake isn't enough. Uh, somehow Magnus managed to uh, do something in that game, but he couldn't uh, overcome the opponent's resistance. Oh, Pentala yeah. defended well. He did uh, defend really well. Let's see the, the Adeban game, the game that's yes. been exciting the entire day. This is where we left it. And after rook c3, he did go for the queen takes g2 all in move. Right. Uh, so after rook takes c8. Okay, did he check. collect all the pawns check. like you did? Check. <laughs> check. Uh, no, did. no check. He did collect all, all pawns. All pawns. Queen c7 Seven. and e4. Okay, we were just... Uh, we kind of stopped because we thought, okay, the extra exchange is too meaningful. But with this move c4, one thing that's embarrassing, there's a queen b5, uh, so you cannot take the pawn on a4 because you would get yourself checkmated oh, yeah, on that's the spot. A, that's a nice line. That's embarrassing. Yeah, that would be this embarrassing. Is, <laughs> this is what chess players, <laughs> this is what chess players would call the ice bucket challenge, right? You know. Yeah. Um, I feel, yeah, he would probably just get on the plane home. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll go back. So... The E4, this pawn is... Annoying. Annoying. 
no and I question. feel a knight in a situation like this, a knight is a good defender to have around your king against mm. queen and rook. Absolutely, without question. Having said that, this, this should be uh, a line, not necessarily to victory, but we'll start with queen d8 check, just to ask yeah. the king. Now, king e6 walks into rook c6, and you don't want that. So the king would likely have to step up to d6, not exactly the happy square. And here I wanted to use the c4 pawn as a kind of a battering ram. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see the move c2, c4 with the pretty cruel intention of c5 and happiness. Um, yeah, let's see. Ian's in some troubles here. Because let's see, if you play e3, just to... Right, to illustrate. See, illustrate, you play c5. C5. Which, and c6. And e5. C6. Oh my goodness, now e2, and you're threatening to promote with a queen. Exactly, with check. With, pardon me, yeah. you're threatening to prom promote with a check. So that's quite exciting. That's very exciting. <laughs> but who's more excited than yeah. whom, right? Uh, um, oh, this actually, let's see, let's update it. Uh, so he played king, uh, queen d8 and he played king d6, I think. Okay. So maybe my move c4 is a little bit too aggressive, forcing. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure how to describe that one. Um, wow. How can oh. I, I, I would like to use my rook to, to greater effect. Can I, uh, Anish Giri yes, uh, is uh, ready oh, to rumble. Oh, excellent. Can we? Uh, Anish Giri, everybody. Yeah, that's great. And then we'll look at number one. Anish Giri. Anish, welcome. Nice. Hi, Anish. Good to see you. Welcome to this uh, beautiful venue. I have a microphone for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, thoughts on your game? Uh, well, I got um, a little bit hopeful because uh, in general I was happy to get a playable position with black. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this uh, has been seen in some games before, this variation. Can I ask one quick question before this? At, uh, after h6, Yasser said he just has to play bishop h4 and go for the... Yeah, he's actually spent here three minutes. Uh, that's... Miracle. I, I don't know if you're seriously considering to go here because this is uh, one of the most uh, theoretical. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, sorry. I meant you shouldn't play h6. You should take. Sorry. That, that's the thing. So you should just go for this line. Yeah. Uh, the thing about Luke is that he is um, not uh, always up to date. Uh, the recent developments, but he is. <laughs> but he has uh, more or less single-handedly created the theory of this variation. So this is the, the one line you in shouldn't... In the 90s, in the 90s, yes. Uh, so he, he really knows it uh, inside out. Of course, um, now I probably know more than him about it, <laughs> but um, the thing about this line is that white has many um, safe ways, in fact. Yeah. Uh, against, uh, for example, he had a game against Jan Smates uh, once, where he went uh, for some theoretical line, and then Jan Smeit surprised him. It was before Rugby one. And Jan Smeit surprised him somewhere, and Luke thought for an hour, and uh, uh, they made a draw. Because uh, White is basically not not really risking in these variations. You know, there are mm -hmm. plenty of um, theoretical lines. But I was surprised that he was thinking here for three minutes because this would be really insane. Because now uh, there is no easy way for White to bail out. Uh, and this position, you have to really know what's going on. So you were really hoping he would play bishop no, h4? No, uh, oh. I didn't have such hopes at all. I, I was just wondering why he's thinking here three minutes. Maybe he was considering bishop c1 back. <laughs> or <laughs> and drive home. Yeah, I, yeah don't, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine him playing this nowadays, but it mm -hmm. would have been fun. Uh, yeah, I think he was actually thinking what he will do here. And he spent the three minutes on this move, yeah. This makes more sense. He was considering here maybe e3, maybe g3. And uh, this variation was played, uh, it looks a little bit clumsy, uh, but uh, queen d8 is a lo loss of time. Um, I don't even uh, remember why exactly, but it's, you can end up slightly worse like that. But here, uh, the theory is 94. Uh, so I assume that since he doesn't know it, I have a chance to, uh, to get a game here. Yeah. Yeah, and here I already have some choices. I could maybe 
Play 5. But the thing is, of course, it's very, very, um, very, very simple, this position. It's pretty drawish, like something like this. It is maybe slightly better for black, but it's quite drawish. And also, I was not sure if this is um, better for black. Mm -hmm. And also, I was not sure. Um, yeah, actually, I was hoping for this position. I was hoping we would get it here after queen e2. Because now I can take everything, play rook or even play queen g6, knight c4, bishop g4, some, some tricks. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had hopes also here, because this move feels um, like black is, white is a little bit overextending, you know, uh, his F4. pawn structure. And also he has a weak square here. But then I realized that uh, probably uh, it just becomes like a forced, uh, forced equality. Because I can, of course, try to keep the tension. And I think I'm not worse for sure in this position because I will play uh, my pawn to b6, rook to d8, to c8. Uh, so, I mean, if we just stand um, bishop to e8, mm -hmm. but then at some point I'll probably go c5, and then we'll get a position like this anyway. And then it's going to be drawish or equal. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I think here uh, I was still hoping um, that Luke would, uh, because sometimes Luke likes to be over optimistic. So I was hoping he would sort of think that here's, he's better here or something, but he's of course just worse. <laughs> it's nice that you have to hope for your opponent thinking he's better. It's well, like, I've played okay. Luke too many times, so <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I really know how he works. But uh, <laughs> I, okay, well, he probably um, decided to just uh, play uh, normal today because of course he's losing too many games in yeah. the tournament. Yeah. yeah, and once he takes the bishop, uh, I have this. Um, I had some hope because this pawn is, uh, is potentially weak, but I'm not in time. I was hoping for e5, but it doesn't really work. For example, there are some fun lines like this, uh, but it doesn't really work. I mean, uh, at the least, White can do this, and end game is good for him. And also, I was thinking, maybe to start with rook d8, and then uh, he can consider to sacrifice the pawn. And now he should go to f1, because if he goes here, I have bishop uh, d7, I think. And if rook c3, I think I have bishop a4. This is a nice line, but it's a little bit of a fantasy, because he goes to f1. And it's a bit dangerous for me, because uh, my bishop has yet to develop. I can play queen b6, but I'm afraid uh, that this position is uh, potentially bad for black. Yep. So um, yeah, and once, now he can just double on the d file and uh, trade everything. So it becomes a draw. And that's a force draw. Well. Yeah, I think to be honest, I should have still played this uh, because I think that it's equal and there would be more chances. But there's for more a game. play. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so uh, a draw. How's the tournament going so far? How do you feel about your score, about your play? Um, yeah, generally uh, I stopped caring about my play because it's usually fine, <laughs> but my score <laughs> yeah. is usually not fine. Yeah, so that's I, a thing. That's uh, the thing, right? Your play is well, and my, uh, my play is uh, my quality is generally very high. But uh, I'm not winning many games. Um. Yeah, and is that a uh, like it's good that you're, you're usually on the good side of the draw? Almost all the time. Almost yes, all yes. the time. Do you feel there will just be be a moment in the future that things will? Yeah, I think Erwin Lamy said in a Volksfront interview, things will click and you will become a point machine. Hmm. Erwin is uh, can find nice words very quickly. <laughs> But is that true? Do you feel that too? That you're like this close? That if you just push a little harder, or you well, have a little I, bit more luck? Uh, yeah, I, um, I, th I think so. Yeah. I, um, okay. Of course, I'm not a uh, you know perfect player, or uh, I have a lot of things to improve in my chess as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I should uh, maybe make use of the momentum um, better sometimes. But I had uh, I had some hopes for um, my last two opponents because I was playing Richard Rapport, who is mm -hmm. giving chances, and Luke Van Veli. They are good players, but they are giving chances. So um, and they played super solidly. Uh, well, you, that, it's okay, yeah. But uh, <laughs> they did. Uh, but somehow, if I would get lucky in the opening, I mean, yesterday my opening went very badly. I was white, and uh, with 15 moves, I was uh, having no winning chances at all. Uh, so I think if I had a little more luck there, I could have developed some uh, momentum. And of course, I didn't have to lose uh, to Levon Aronian. I mean, you could see how inspired he got after that game today. He won another one. Yeah. yeah so, so again, what has to happen for Anish Giri to become this uh, punter machine, point machine? That's yeah, I have to get lucky. I think I have to win maybe 
one or two games in a row, and then, and then you're like, <laughs> and then I'll be on fire, yeah. <laughs> on fire. Well, let's uh, let's hope we have three more rounds, so three more points. That's good. Um, yeah, the, the, although uh, with 50 percent uh, before the last three rounds, uh, it's hard to hope for a tournament victory, but uh, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. I want to ask you uh, one more thing. Can we uh, look at the Adi Bond's game together? Yeah, for sure. Did you follow it? Yes. It's an interesting game. Yeah, I know Adiban quite well, so I've expected this uh, to happen because he's. Uh, I've studied many of his games, and he's played this system a uh, huge amount of times oh with yeah. White. He's tried everything here, and now he sacrificed a piece again. Yeah, he sacrificed a piece indeed. Um, yeah, and this looks very, uh, very interesting. I mean, I cannot give a verdict here without uh, analyzing it in great detail. But you can see here that uh, Black doesn't have an easy way to develop his uh, queenside pieces, so that's. Uh, that's quite crucial. I mean, here, uh, he cannot move the knight uh, yeah. because of... Uh, you have to unclick something. Yeah, oh, you have to click this uh, yeah. arrow. He cannot move the knight because of queen e5, um, rook d6. And I guess a move like queen c5 uh, would be probably Maybe bad F6. because of f6. Yeah. Some queen e4 or queen d3. Uh, there is just not no easy move for black. So queen f6 is interesting. Um, bishop b3, rook h8. Now he he still doesn't want anything actually. But so rook f3 is nice. Rook comes here. Yeah, it's very very hard to play this position. Um, here, Jan maybe could have played rook d rook d8 right away. Yeah, right away. This uh, felt like a loss of tempo. Um, oh, yeah, but then then what is his next move again? Yeah, I guess he was afraid of uh, maybe rook c3 or. Um, yeah, maybe rook to b8 should be useful. Then rook to maybe c7. Yeah, maybe, yeah, it's hard to say, maybe something like this. But then this is there. So uh, I th it's sort of, a, you know, white is a full piece down, but it's yeah. sort of like a, a stalemate. It uh, reminds me a little bit of a variation in uh, in this system. Oh, and they, they do, yeah, something very similar. And you often get such positions, you know, in uh, something like this. And you end up often in a position. There were some games uh, that look very similar to this, you know. There's a, a full piece, but somehow very hard to move for black. And if we look at the current position, let's see. Uh yeah, I think he was just winning, yeah, because uh, here they were repeating a couple times. So, but yeah. okay, of course, it looks very dangerous for, uh, for black. The key moment was here. He could either try to defend uh, or uh, hope for perpetual, but there's no perpetual, so he had to do this. Now White can, for example, uh, play positionally like this, and he is again stuck, yeah. and White already has uh, equal material. So White, uh, like they say, you know, every uh, gambit, gambiteer or every person who sacrifices uh, plays a gambit, his secret wish is to gain the material back, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's neat. So I'm pretty sure Adiban was very happy to get the material back here. And here, yeah, there is no perpetual. Maybe he won't, maybe he actually went for it, but uh, for this position. But these pawns are far, and uh, I think White must be winning here. Actually, quite See easily, it. no? Looks completely winning, to be honest. E3, E3, probably just uh, C5. There is threat. Yeah, there's a threat. Made. So, okay, you have to think of some miracles already, like, but it doesn't work. King always can escape to A5. Oh, not here. It's mate in two. <laughs> This shouldn't happen. A little nuance. So queen e6. <laughs> yeah, such nuances are can be crucial. But there's right. also mate in one, which I also missed. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, white probably winning like this. No, but it feels white is for sure winning uh, because uh, he has attack, more material, and the e pawn is uh, a little too far for to cause some real damage. So let's see if they made a move. E3, yeah. So let's see c5. E3, c5. Is there anything? Left to do. Uh, I, I doubt. Yeah, only have one check. Yeah, you have a check, but it's not yeah, one from the from B three would be nice, but this yeah. is not enough. This is not enough. Then you have to play Queen D four. No, that's also. Awesome. And okay, let's say the worst. Uh, in the worst case, I think White. You can just could do that even do rook. something very sad like queen d6 and rook c3, but this is of course not what's going to happen. 
Yeah, this position must be. Yeah, queen d5 is a better move than queen e6 because it doesn't allow a mate. But I can actually pick up the pawn here, yeah? I like queen b7. Maybe this is his uh, only chance. So it's probably winning, but there are some little tricks left. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, always when you play on this level, uh, you almost never have a winning position without tricks. And the moment you get one, they resign. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot. We'll, uh, we'll take a quick break. Uh, we will show a few videos and we'll, back, we'll be back in uh, five to ten minutes. I want to get a big round of applause for Anish Giri. For okay. Thank you for showing the game. Thanks a lot. Your favorite chess book? I think it's My System by Aaron Imtovich. No, you doesn't learn it. Probably Gawain Jones' Dr Dragon System. <coughs> it's um, not one, one, of, uh, one book. Probably it's Dvoretsky book series. Yeah. Favorite chess book or My Great Predecessors? Book of Polygieski, the Scrum Master Preparation. Who's your favorite world chess champion? Uh, Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> Perhaps it will be in the future. Yeah? Uh, Bobby Fischer. Mm, Kasparov. Michael Dahl. From chess point of view, it, it is definitely Kasparov. The big fan of uh, of Magnus yeah, because I like his just his his spirit and his. That is my favorite that is still chess moment. Maybe when tournament is over and if I play good. My many 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 very very nice restaurants here in, in like <laughs> maybe from fish restaurant, which is closed already unfortunately. <laughs> but okay, in, in fact there are a lot of moments uh, because atmosphere in the Vike is fantastic. Chess atmosphere that I like very much and appreciate. Mm, when I won the Tata Steel Challengers, that was my favorite moment since I qualified to the Tata Steel Masters. A dive in the in the in the North Sea, you know, just to celebrate it's over. But uh, yeah, that's basically my my finest moment. What's your favorite chess opening? I, I have no idea, but uh, let's say something between Sicilian and Grunfeld now. Chess opening, maybe Sicilian. My favorite chess opening is uh, uh, Tarosh system. Let it be English opening. Sicilian? Although I've been mated uh, a zillion times, I still stick to my Sicilian, so it's, uh, I mean, it's still a lot of fun. I mean, and. What is your favorite chess quote? Favorite chess quote? Actually, I really like the one of Bent Larsen. Uh, if you have to be a chess grandmaster, you have to win the Vike at least once. <laughs> well, I think it's a uh, you know, famous statement of Tartakovic that the, in a chess game, uh, wins the one who did mistake not for last, but the one, the one mistake before. Never say never. Something like chess is life, but life is not only chess. My life is chess, but uh, my, my life is not only chess. If, if, I, if I win this game, well, then I will thank God on my knees. But once you won the game, you will never thank God anyway. Yeah, so.
Welcome back, Tata Steel Chess, round 10 representing Yasser Serdogan, Text of it. It's been an exciting round. It has actually. been. Lots uh, of nice victories. Our tournament leader, as uh, smooth as ever, Wesley So, yeah. uh, sharing with us his insights into a very nice game. Levon Aronian, likewise, coming and joining us. And we've got another game on tap that also looks to be critical for our tournament standings. Yeah, Elian of Vaihi, they were both in second place before this round. Exactly, and uh, it was a case of an isolated queen pawn yeah, let's where let's something very uh, strange occurred. And this, uh, this was the position, right? Just the isolated uh, right, pawn on d5. Right, and already this, this capture knight takes e4, this rook a2. Uh, some artificial looking moves mm -hmm. to my mind. When in this exact moment, I guess it was move 19, the move knight takes e4 was done because there, w there was a fear that knight takes f2, followed by queen takes e3 check, uh, would be a good sacrifice. That was why Pavel captured. But afterwards... Sorry, but now then d e takes, right. it's no longer an isolated pawn. Right, and uh, things started changing right around these parts. Already I feel that any advantage that white may have had in the position is gone, and it's the Chinese player on the sunny side yeah, of the... Yeah, exactly, because it's nice to watch the following moves, or mm -hmm. starting here, I feel every black move is active. Yes. Like, uh, here it's, you just played queen a1, threatening right. threatening to uh, capture... On g7. Oh, sorry, that was that arrow didn't that go well. That looked like one of yeah, my arrows. That arrow that didn't go great. too straight. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know how this works, but okay. instead of playing something like F6, he's like, no. Rook C2 is much stronger. Exactly, decision. he plays Rook C2. So if you take now... Then he loses on Rook Then you lose because you, you take on A2 and you capture back. So that's an active way of defending instead yes. of a passive way. Yeah, the best defense is a good offense. I right? Guess. Right. Bishop C3, the Rooks were traded. Rook and turns. now Black was the first to uh, grab the open line. Having said all of that, it still looks quite likely four versus four, two versus two, the game is going to end in a draw, but still something went wrong. Let's see, yeah, queen, let's b2, see. Queen, queen b2, queen b2, queen g5, h4. That might already be a step in the wrong direction. Four. I mean, I can understand he was a little bit concerned about the bishop are e3. getting weaker now. Correct, absolutely. So let's see, queen, queen g6. The bishop came to e5 already. In a sense, he's worried about bishop takes e3, right? Yeah. So he went bishop e5 as kind of a defensive reaction. Bishop g4. This is a very good move from Black's perspective. He wants to see these weak light squares, specifically f3 and d3. The other nice reason for the move, bishop g4, is maybe white will play rook d1, trading off this more active oh, yeah. d8 rook. So I like this move, bishop g4, very much. Queen, Queen c2 wants yes. to play rook d1 anyway, maybe. Maybe. Takes, takes. 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 Queen f5, where are you going with your bishop? Not the most beautiful square, by the way. OK, h6. Making, uh, making sure there's no back rank <laughs> mate and preparing g5 uh, yeah. along the way. Very important, the luft. And I oh, love wow. this move, rook yeah. d3, kind of I leveraging. I'm almost taking the rook, but I'm not. Yes. Because I'm stopping at d3. Exactly. And white doesn't want to trade rooks because then after e takes d3, this past pawn yeah. is scary. So he plays rook d1. Okay. G5. G5. That's what I mean with every move feels active. Yes. All of There's purposeful. There's no dull moment. Purposeful. Yeah. Yes. I very, like very that. nice uh, play by Bishop the Chinese Bishop B8. Guy. There are no other squares, really. Right. So all the way to the end of the diagonal, King H7. Okay. Nice. There are reasons why mm, there might be a future Queen C8 check. He's just looking for a safer haven. Yeah. Okay. King, Queen E2. Queen E2. King G6. Uh, we're coming up to see uh, the world. <laughs> yeah. Okay, King G6. B4. B4. 
four. Yeah, why does to do something, right? And now the decision. I'm like, I won the D file. Yes, queen D7, and he did win the D file. That's a great victory. Rook D2, you bet. Queen D3, these moves play themselves. Rook E2 and Bishop E3 are uh, threats in the position. Yeah, Rook E2, but is there anything you can... Yeah, and also A3, and so you just played A4. Okay. But now Rook, Rook E2. E2. And now, I think when we were coming on air, we got this position. Yeah. We were ahead of the players, and we saw the blunder, Queen D1. That would be refuted immediately by Bishop takes E3. And then yeah. you pointed out this nice variation if you take, take the queen, that you just take back. Right. And after taking D2. D2. There was a bishop F2 that you mentioned, but this looked this good enough. This is even stronger, yes. right? Yeah, because you could also first It'd win a, a second pawn, but then maybe after rook D1. Exactly. There's some work ahead. Yeah, definitely. Whereas capturing right away was great. And so he, he, he had to play he, queen yeah, C3. C3 indeed. And here. Almost instantly, where eBay played, rook, rook takes. takes e3. That's a nice move. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. So let's so, point out. So if obviously, when you take rook now takes, now I have an extra and you pawn. You need the extra pawn. Yes. And if you take, take on like this one, yes. And now I think his idea is queen takes e3 check. No. Mm, no. No, I think bishop, bishop takes. Bishop takes e3. I beg your pardon. And King H1, H1, if you go to G2 or H2, Queen E2 check. Uh, this looks scary. <laughs> yeah, these so are some, there are some nice variations. For instance, if you go to H3. And made in two. Made in two. Nice. And if you go to H1. H1. Yes. Let's see, do we have something? Also extra special. Hmm. I see a perpetual check. I don't see too I much more than that. I think he's going for a perpetual. Though. No, I don't either. There must be some nice... And is, is there something like if you just play check? Check, king, yes. For instance, check. check going back. And yeah. if you would just take the rook? That is a nice line because if you take... If you take an E3. Three. I have bishop a7. Have you notice that when we're not really sure that we're whispering? Yes, <laughs> our voices go way <laughs> down. Uh, bishop a7. Check. King g1. Check. This looks winning. Yes. King h1. That's a mate. Queen oh, f2. sorry. Queen f2. So king h1. And now you advance the pawn. Oh, there's no. You don't advance the pawn because there's a check on C2. I think the variation, I am looking, I think the variation is right here after king h1, or oh, pardon me, it was king h1. Yeah, there it is. Uh, there's also a bishop d2 in the position. Bishop d2. So here a little bit of a difference is if you go queen c2, um, I wanted to go queen f3 check. You can't go king oh, g1. Sorry. Oops, sorry. Yeah, queen f3 check. Uh, queen f3. King g1, queen e3 check. Oh, and then you pick up the rook? Exactly. Yeah. So you would have to go to h2, and like the variation you were showing, can I take the rook? You would take my bishop, and I would go advance the pawn, yeah? Although this isn't as convincing, this isn't... And this is also not something you play after a 30-second thought no. period. So no. So the Chinese grandmaster has clearly uh, seen a variation much better than this. Is this the game, by the way? Let's uh, look at the position right now. Oh, they have made a few more moves. A4 takes, yes. takes, bishop takes, king h1. He just took the rook. He took the rook. Queen takes. And now I think he wants queen h3 or just push the pawn. Maybe it's just as direct as pushing the pawn. This could be yeah. like, there you go. Because indeed now if you take on h7 with the bishop, you just have 
e2. Right. And, and also there are no F2. checks with a queen on d3. Very, very nicely, a nice point indeed. Because in that final variation, sorry, bishop takes a7, yes, bishop f2, queen d1 is... And if you play queen e1 first... Much better move. So that after queen d1, you have bishop f2? Yes. So now I don't see the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But queen okay, e1. See. Yeah, queen e. <coughs> mm. Well, we're sure, we're sure making a difficult one. Oops, excuse me. On, on ourselves. Does it make uh, a difference if you check first? No, it doesn't, I think. Maybe it does. So check, check. king, push. No, queen e1. Your same move is a, is a good defensive move for sure. Hmm. Okay. He made the move. Your, your brilliant commentators are not so brilliant. No. Because uh, give us a shout out if you see what we... He played. This has happened. He played e3. He played e3. And We now, were wondering if you take on a7. Yes. Queen d2, perhaps? Yeah, but then bishop takes e3. That is a good answer. Mm. Queen e4 check is met by king g1. Phew. Okay, this is You thought the last hour is smooth sailing, right? Yeah, but we were doing uh, so well. <laughs> we guessing like preparing the moves. Every, guessing every move. Right, this one... I, I'm a little bit confused as e to... E2, one more time. Queen Bishop, e, no. F2. No, Queen E1, your move, oh, Queen, queen, sorry, e1 queen E1. Was brilliant. Believe in yourself, Tex. I, I do, <laughs> I do. I have to tell myself time after time. Believe in yourself. E2, Queen E1, King H5? Is that what that suggested to us? King H5. But that is a very, very uh, but that doesn't unusual seem, way of... That doesn't seem too winning, right? Mm, or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need more self-confidence here. Yeah. Uh, so I think, but he's thinking, and he could be thinking for 45 minutes. So shall we check out another game? Yes, but I just want to point out one cute line, because it is kind of cute. After king h5, bishop f2. Yeah, let's bishop say. f2. Uh, when we, yes. King, king g4. King g2. Queen f3. Yeah, check. this is nice. King g1, king h3. Yeah, this is. And that would be a beauty. Yeah, we say in yeah, in bundle calling, a one walking king. A walking a king. Winning walking king. Well, a friend of mine, Bruce Harper, and I, he, he's trying to convince me to write a book on king walks. Oh, you know? yeah. 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 That's king a walks. good topic. Yeah. And one of our chapters is failures. <laughs> <laughs> failing. <laughs> this, failing. Yeah, failing. Uh, this one looks very successful. Yeah, very but also, successful. if you don't play king g2, but well, let's say you play king g1. The same setup. With right, the same. Yes. You, could, you could go king h3. Yes, exactly. Now here I may have to go something like queen a1. Oh no, there's queen d1. Yeah. Check. <gasps> well. That could be a gorgeous conception. Let's see what happens. All right. And we, what are our other, our third game we've had two? Briefly look, so Adiban uh, is still playing and this is the position or he's been thinking for a while now? So he has played the move c4 and I think we saw something like this a bit ago with c5 check. But okay, and I wasn't very satisfied with the outcome. Yeah. Okay. So, and Anish also couldn't find a definite win yet. So, so that's oh, Anish was also looking oh, he was at the also, game. Yeah, I have oh, everyone brilliant. look at that game oh, just very so clever. to get a second opinion. Yes. And then the, the last game we, that's still going on in the Masters group is Karyakin Andraikin. And this looks Remember like you a, said the B-pawns weren't too dangerous? Well, I was saying that they actually, you can leverage them to move your pieces nice. up the board. I like, I think uh, White is winning. I'm not 100% sure, but my first uh, impression is that White is winning. 
Okay, so let's see, b7, so rook b8. All right, looks like a very good move. Now here, uh, I was always taught by my chess coaches to put my rook, my rook, behind my opponent's pawn. So I've always been told that the move rook d5 is a decent move in such positions. So that if you take on b3, I want to play rook to d well, oh, no. d7. No, 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 no. Sorry. Because then you have knight, knight c5, c5, right? I'm sorry, I blew it. So let's let's go back yeah, one. Yeah, I so blew it. There is maybe knight d6. Maybe knight d6 is the Threatening best. rook a. a8. Amongst other things, yes. Now this looks very good for white. Yeah, and by the way, it's also very nice that the white king is close yeah, to the pass pawn. Because after d2, I can't play rook a8. You I can't play, play rook, rook a8, a8 because of uh, mate. Checkmate. Let's get a rook. Yeah. Ooh, stylish. Stylish uh, checkmate. Yes. So rook he a1. has to play rook a1. Yes. And now this looks good enough. Okay. Well. It's actually confusing. E3. No, E3 looks nice, right? Because if right. you take, you play knight there. Knight yes. here. And rook B1. Rook B1. Check. Check. I'm always going to get a rook from now on. <laughs> okay. Takes. Check. And, and this position. This is not that convincing. No, this is not what you want. No, because the king, will, black king, will march backwards now. Okay, so still some still also uh, interesting. difficulties. Yeah. Uh, first of all, of course, we're here in Harlem in this beautiful, beautiful building, by the way. The playing hall is simply outstanding. This theater, uh, being in front of all yourselves, is very, very nice. But there is still, in Vaikanze, the master's group. Yeah. Shall we just have a peek yeah, I, on I, their let, let's efforts? Let's go there. But first, I want to announce one yes. uh, a, a, West, a film video with Wesley So, his response after his victory. OK. And then there's something with one of our microphones that they have to fix. Excellent. So let's watch a short clip, and then we'll be back with the challenger group games. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Wesley, congratulations on yet another victory. It's very likely that this will give you a full point of an advantage here at the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. How do you feel about the game and about the tournament in general? Well, today's game went very well. Um, so I'm very pleased with it and like to thank the Lord for letting me win today. Um, well, before this game, I had the series of four draws. So I was kind of worried if I was going to win again, but today is a relief. Um, I think Radoslaw followed the theory until when I played b4, maybe bishop e6 is, would have equalized for black. But he played queen e7, and then after queen b2, I probably got some pressure, and he missed some things in the end, after which my pawns just uh, just kept just kept pushing. Well, <laughs> so three more games to go, and uh, it looks like Magnus has a good position too, so maybe it's not a one-point lead, but hopefully it will. How did you like it here in Harlem? How do you like the, the venue, the music hall, and the exhibition that you visited before the round? <clears throat> well, very good. It's a very nice venue. The people say it's one of the better venues that we, we hold here. I think the main advantage for the spectators, they got plenty of seats, so they don't have to stand for many hours following the games. And uh, in general, I like this venue when it's like uh, when it's like a theater, it's very similar to the ones we played in the in the London Chess Classic and also in, in other tournament in other tournaments of the Grand Chess Tour. So I, I like it. It brings familiarity and and it seems I play well on the road. So you wish that the other three rounds were also on tour? Yeah, I why not? This is a <laughs> this is a it's a very good way to bring chess to to other people and to other spectators and not just in what I can say. Thank you, Wesley, and good luck for the rest. Thank you. Well, Tex, a very happy tournament leader. Of course. Of yes. course. 
He's winning on top nicely. of the chess world right now. Undefeated. He's on yeah. some streak of 50 games, maybe more, that he's gone undefeated. His last loss was way back in the summer of last year uh, to Magnus Carlsen. But since that uh, tournament in Bilbao, nobody can touch him. He's, he hasn't lost a game. When we left, we were going to say, let's just take a gander at the challengers. And yeah. you brought up a game for us. Yeah, this is uh, Shang Lai Lu versus Eric Hansen. And one might call it a miniature. Indeed, so let's, it let's looks see. like it's under 20 moves. Knight, Knight C3. C3. That uh, actually has a Dutch name. Van Geet, after yes. Dick Van Geet. Yes. A Dutch guy, Dutch, I think, international master who played his, enti his entire life. Yes. And also wrote a book about it. And I mm. read that book and it's great. Really? Yeah, it's really fun. It's mostly fun. It's right. not like you have the best opening repertoire in the history of chess, but, but it is a fun book and has, uh, many short games uh, are in it. Entertaining. So it's very entertaining. Okay. And I, you don't see it often. No. I liked uh, Eric Hansen. He, he thought for six minutes after his first move. And I always, always think that's, that's fun. He's right. Like, okay, how will I go about this? I'll prepare it on move one. <laughs> exactly. E4. So now you could go to uh, a Karo Khan or, or, or a French, French defense or play Knight of, knight uh, of Six. An Alakine. Yeah, uh, yeah, but he, he took. Okay. Knight takes Knight. F6. Six. And he took. So now it's almost in Karo Khan territory, but Black hasn't committed his pawn to C6. Yeah, hasn't played he C6. can use the tempo to better effect. Exactly. All right. You can take both ways, I think. But Absolutely. Take. So the advantage is you, your bishops can come out right away. Disadvantage is you don't have pawns in the center anymore. Right. But D4, bishop D6, D6. bishop D3. Ricky Rafka, <laughs> castles. C3, check. Why not? Yeah, baby. 92. C5. And now it's definitely transposed into an E <coughs> takes F6, Karo Khan, but Black has a much better accelerated version of that. Because you didn't waste time playing C6 and then Precisely. C5. Yeah. Precisely. Bishop E3. Right. So. I feel right. You could just castle kingside here. And if you probably felt like it's it. a very good idea. From Black's point of view, Black wants to play queen c7 with a tempo against the pawn on h2 and quickly play b6. And you're the big battery man between yeah, us. Yeah, I know. So, so if, you, if you say castle. So with a tempo, h3, b6, and there's ideas of bishop b7 and queen c6 uh, to be considered. No. Okay. Um, Black has basically seized an early initiative. Queen C2. Queen C2. Trying to return the favor <laughs> exactly. on the other side of the board. G6. Okay, this is a prelude to an attack that White has to really be careful about. Sometimes the pawn F6, F5, F4 mm -hmm. can really be used as a favorable battering ram, and White needs to be aware of that. Yeah. Okay, castles. castles. Queen c7. Well, now targeting h2, but it doesn't really matter anymore. Right. I think In this case, it's just about the threat. Well, threat may be a strong, but the yeah. idea of playing c5, c4. c4. Yeah. Okay. Queen, so Sidestepping exactly. the potential for that c4. threat. c4. Nonetheless. Bishop b1. This is not a battery, by the way. No. <laughs> it's not like a great... No. <laughs> no. There's no checkmate in sight. No. Now, again, uh, all of these pattern recognitions that go through my head, when I look at this knight on b6, which is coming to the beautiful d5 square, yeah. I think of a martial gambit, which is really a very beautiful martial gambit, because the knight on d5 will be dominant. b5, b4 is a ready-made... Attack. And a martial gambit where uh, white castled queenside. Not the best idea <laughs> for survival. <laughs> right. <in> right. <laughs> okay. You, you can just. Knight d5, see. there it is. It, it's like a Thor in the middle of the board. And h5. Okay. You're going nowhere fast. Bishop g4. All right. All the pieces come into play. Right. Oh, this is your f5 move. Exactly. Yeah, well. Who's first? Who's going to be first? I suspect it's black, because after rookie seven, I was going to say that 
my weakness that you're piling up upon, the h7 pawn, can be very adequately defended by the rook now. It's not so weak. It's not so weak. Bishop, Bishop c2. c2. Well, C2? white has basically run out of ideas. Exactly, because he, can, he can't play any pawns. No, f3 would Rook cause a, yeah. piling on the pressure, threatening knight takes e3, should the occasion be needed. Bishop a4, well now we see what bishop c2 was all about. But here I suspect, is queen a5 or b5 and queen a5? You could end up getting checkmated. If uh, you play, yeah, well yeah. he played, show you, show yes. you what he played, he played Absolutely. rook takes e3. Well that's also very, for oh that's really a good move. Oh my goodness, because so, the knight is hanging on e2, I'm sorry. Exactly, so. Rook takes e3 and bishop f4. Oh, white is just, it's a disaster. It's, it's, a, it's gone wrong, yeah, completely. He, so after taking on h6, f takes, he even resigned. So there was 20 moves. It's probably all, all over, right? Wow. If you take, take. Right. And I'm sure the idea is if you play knight g1, there's uh, ideas of bishop f4, and then it's sort of like, turn off your television <laughs> sets, horror show is being featured here. No, this was, wow, that was a huge victory for Eric Hansen, who's yeah. been on a roll. Tell us the other results. Yeah, let's go to the other results. Marcus Rager was leading, uh, Jeffrey Zhang and... Yeah, so other results, Marcus Rager uh, made a draw with Benjamin Bock. Okay. Uh, Smirin was also leading. He made a draw with Erwin Lamy. Right. And then we have... Uh, Jeffrey Zhang and Gawain Jones. Yeah, uh, Jeffrey Zhang won against Sopico. He becomes a tournament leader. And Gawain Jones is still in progress. Let's see. Let's have a peek. This is the position. Gawain he Jones is, is playing white. White against the Chinese lady, uh, Lei Ting Li. And it looks well. to me like Jones is doing his best to try to draw in exactly. the game. He's in big big troubles here as he's an exchange behind. He does have an A pawn, but... Yes, but I suspect after a move like Queen B4, uh, the advantages are all on black side of the table. Oh my. So real shakeup going on in the challengers. Let's yeah. return to our masters. Definitely. Oh, this, these are the standings. Let's see uh, real quick. Raggers. Marcus Murrin and Jeffrey Chong, they're all on seven points. And so Gawain Jones is, is not going to make it to seven. Probably yeah. going to stick uh, on six. Eric mm -hmm. Hansen, six and a half. So that's going to be very exciting. And With three rounds to go. And there's a lot at stake, right? Absolutely. I bet all of them want to get that spot. Well, it's a tough, it's, it's a really, really tough field because essentially there's one prize. I mean, okay, there's a prize fund and everybody gets a prize, don't get me wrong, but I mean the big prize it's is the in qualification the into the Masters in 2018. Yes. Adiban is doing and yes. doing really well. Right. Let's, uh, let's see, so is E3, it. check. Yes. D6, check, King E7. Oh, they just repeated moves. They repeated moves. Because that was where I was trying the c5 check. Yeah, exactly. The king came to d5, and I didn't have a good answer. Yeah, we, we weren't really sure yet. Exactly. Well, so they, they've repeated moves. Let's see at Karyakin. They are b still thinking after, he's still thinking after b7. It. Yes. Very Is it good. correct? Does Andraikin still have half an hour? And Karyakin, 45 minutes. He's thinking, he's taking his time. Mm -hmm. But again, this feels like a winning position for white. Yeah, but there are still some tricks, right? Oh, yes. Just like in the Adiban game, that you, it is probably winning, but there are some nasty tricks. Definitely. Ve Yi, let's see, the king march. And he has king done it. H5. King H5. Yeah, after, so he's played king H5. After securing the pawn on E2 so that white's queen is tied, and most likely his bishop will be yeah. as well, the bishop coming back to f2. While white is tied up, king g4, king h3, queen f3, and mate on g2 is a likely march. Would you ever sacrifice the g-pawn with white? Yes. Just that you have so more, that more have space, and otherwise he could, yeah, otherwise he could this hide very, behind the... That, that, that would be a very fearsome... Uh, 
uh, what I would. So to see G4. I'm not sure I would do it right away. Let's let's for example say I play Bishop F2. Bishop F2 is Bishop a star. Yeah. Okay. If you play King G4, then I would think about Queen G1, so I could blockade with the bishop and not the queen, and I'm. Oh, here you can check me on h7 and e4. Check? Yeah. Uh, so this is not the smartest move because <laughs> no. of, ch of checkmate. Exactly. But if you play queen h2. I, it's funny that, oh. Oh, they made a, we have a, oh, we a, have result. a result. Let's we'll go back to this game, but. My, oh, wow. My impression. They have a draw. My impression is that Adibon uh, didn't break through. Ian, Ian's living a charmed life because he was lost with Luke Van Valley. Yeah. And here, I really think his he must have been lost at some yes, point, right? I think his position was extremely was dubious in the extreme, and somehow, I don't know exactly where Baskaran missed his chance. Um, and, and yeah. Ian's probably shaking, He's just his, shaking head his head like, like I don't know how he got through this. But I mean, a cat with nine lives. Yeah, but uh, that is a quality that you manage to save games like these. Yes, yes. That is, you need a specific skill or specific right. type of fighting spirit to get mm. through games like this. Indeed, and uh, I've seen it time and time again. These players, these elite players are so good. If you give them this tiniest window, the moment that they can't escape, they crawl right yeah. through it. They find it. Okay, so, back to this uh, yeah, King crucial H5, game for B5 standings. played after 14 minutes by uh, Elianov. B5. See. We'll see it on the screen. There, it's on the screen. B5. Hmm. B5. Having some plans. Yeah, you don't need to play Bishop F2 just yet. Okay, well, we'll fall King for G4. it. Absolutely. King G4. So, this is very scary because when the king gets to h3, it's really participating in the attack. So, can you play king h2? Yes. As Victor Korchnoi would say, with trembling hands. <laughs> 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 but the thing now is that. The, the A and the B pawn will start moving, so right. black has to do something. Precisely. Like do you, can, you, can you march the F pawns? That might be asking a lot. Yeah, is that too much? Not sure. Because um, you can't really open up the position too much. Yeah. I'm, let me, I can check you on H7, and maybe after king g2, check you back on e4. I'm trying to wonder, I'm wondering where the queen is best positioned, on the d3 square where it is currently or on the e4 square? Um, so if you go king g2, go ahead. Queen e4 check, king back to h2. Or I, I, Here you allow me king yeah, h3, so right? I, have to, so I need to go to You're trying to be annoying, exactly. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, have I made progress? I don't know. Um, oh. Wow. Now can you? Yes. Again, f5. I'll right, reach for it. <laughs> right. Only okay. You mentioned a5, a5 was my there source of counterplay. F4. Okay. Now here, mm -mm. I'm thinking: Is now the time I should be withdrawing my bishop? Bishop back to f2. Bishop f2. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I'm always worried about some checkmating potentials. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> At the moment, I haven't seen them, but go ahead. No, check king h3. No, then I can take on e2. Sorry, 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 sorry. Just mumbling out loud. And that's okay. And if you do check mm -hmm. king g1. Yes. Well, f3 also, then the queen just comes out if you play f3. It's not so clear, right? So my queen would come out, as you suggested, Tex. King would come to h3. And who's mating whom? <laughs> 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 I don't know. 
This looks this too bizarre. A, I, I feel I, like it looks like a study of yes, some sort. Yes, of course. That someone, and a study Jan Timmerman would make. Yes. After and two weeks, he's like. Right, he would work it all out. By the way, shout out to Jan Timmerman because some of the studies, he really, you know, vexed me terribly at a party of his. He set up the board and there was like three boards and like in order to get a drink, you had to solve like these, you know, studies. And it was like, I was 20 minutes into study number one and not any closer to getting a drink. <laughs> it was like, you know, rough crap, rough yeah. host, you know, yeah. really rough. You had, to, you, you had to work, you had to earn. Yeah, you had to, yeah. You had to earn it. You have to stay sharp to get the drinks. Exactly. Right, so. so it was self-defeating. If I succeeded, <laughs> I had a zero percent chance of getting a second one. Well, but this is a very exciting game. Very Without exciting end question. game. So this is again B5. This is the position we have. All right. And moment. They are not allowed to touch the pieces as we are. <laughs> right. So it's even harder for them. Uh, 27 minutes for Pavel, 43 minutes for the Chinese Grandmaster. Um, and you, a I, very double edged position. Do you think they know who's playing for a win? They, they feel one another. Like everybody has a kind of an energy that they bring to the table. And for the last, I'm going to say, ever since bishop takes e3, or yeah. rook takes e3, I mm -hmm. beg your pardon, ever since the sacrifice, I think the initiative has been on black side of the table, and he's the one that's been playing for the win. Now it's less certain. Yeah, especially again with the with the pawns on the a4 and b5. That's very feel, serious counterplay. Right. Yes. So he has to have something. Well. Right. Let's see uh, how this ends up. Let's see. Look at the other. Game that's still in progress. Karyakin. Okay, okay and so this we have was kind more. of the position where we. So after b7, d2 was played. Right, the rook, rook was a1, forced and rook b8. It. Right. And I think we were looking at something like, I don't know, knight d6, e3. We were somehow on a, on a position like that. Exa yeah, exactly. I like, by the way, that because he he first played d2. That, so there that was no rook d5. Yeah, business. but also that if you if you take, ooh, uh, if you let's see, I have to click here. If you yeah. take with the knight, that you have this other checkmate over here. Nasty, right? Ooh, yes. So few pieces, so many checkmates possibilities. <laughs> so rook a1, obviously, and rook b8. And only now. So now you can take on. On d2. Right, so knight takes d2, rook takes b7, is looking closer to a draw than anything. It is four against three, though, if you take on e4, for instance. But it's the double two pawns. double pawns. Yeah, they don't make a, uh, a sterling impression, to be sure. The problem that we had, Tex, is that when we went for our knight d6, there was a a really nice trick in the position we discovered. E3, right? E3. Yeah. And because of the threat of E2 check, we were forced to capture it. And then we came up with this knight C2, rook B1, rook under promotion yeah, is very definitely important. Definitely very important to take a rook. Style matters, right? right? <laughs> knight, uh, rook takes, knight takes E3. And the problem is, that white's not in time, whereas yeah, black is go going over king here. up. Yes. King, well, you have to move your king. King, king, king. And we need to, we need to have landed on d5 or c5. Yeah. So this is working out nicely for Dimitri. So he played a move, I think. And that Let's was... Let's see what the move is. So knight a5. Knight a5. Okay, so how square. does this... How is this different? Oh. In this case, yeah. the black king is not touching exactly. the knight on d6. And you can always play b4 to defend it. Quite important. Oh, so so let's, uh, he played another uh, move. He played knight b5. But let's quickly show this. Yes. If you take, yes. take rook b1. Rook. I'll take a queen for once, <laughs> okay. just, just to see what happens. To so make take, a take. And if you go over here now, the king is just in time. OK, show us. Keep going. Keep going. There we go, there we go, there we go. Keep going. Or can you yes. now move your rook? And then keep going. OK, let's keep going. Yes. King? Right. So now the problem is black's pieces are tied to the promotion square b8, and the b-pawn becomes our hero. Yeah, this b-pawn, the 
the other B pond. Bum, bum. Yes. Oh, I should make M arrows. I mean, marches to Well, that's a beautiful a line. So he obviously knew all about this. And Reichen did, so he played knight B5. B5. Not giving up his knight and two pawns for the exchange. Okay, here his idea is very simple. He wants to go knight d6 and knight takes b7, getting rid of the invader, yeah. the alien. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, and will he have enough pawns left in the end? So Let's do it. King up. Or rook or king? King. Okay, king e2. King e2, knight, knight d6. Let's do it. Let's take a pawn. And let's take the knight and put our rook behind the pawn. Oh, that's an important lesson, right? Yes, I learned it very early. It stayed. W it's a lifelong lesson. It stayed <laughs> yeah. with me. Like. It's brought me, you know, a couch, a <laughs> TV, you know, satellite. I realized now that actually, well, the rooks are perfectly placed in the beginning, right behind their pawns. Exactly. Just they're not free pawns yet. So. Exactly. Yes, and this looks. Winning, winning, because yeah. you just go b4 yeah. and yeah. the pawn just m moves. Fast. And the king is already here and yes. So, so this, this looks like winning. a very, very nice and so simple line. So king e2. Is there anything we're missing? Well, from Dimitri's point of view, he better hope so because <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a very easy uh, line of play for white. Can I, I just one one move? Yes. Knight d4? Yes, and I will play king d1 because yeah, I'm very clever. <laughs> you're very clever. <laughs> yes. Let's uh, king d2. Yes. And I want to point out, but, but this probably also doesn't work, right? Right. Because uh, you, you take here and you think you have a trick. Until Check you until realize. you realize, okay, I might have uh, picked up this is, the rook. This is what we would call raise par, <laughs> right? Hans yeah, raise yeah. a knight on a1. Yeah, well. He, uh, a tavern owner, not in his honor, called his tavern Ray's Pard. And it wasn't to honor him, but to mock him. Oh. Because Hans Ray, in a time trouble, he put a knight on A1 and Heike Westerun and put a bishop on A4 that kept yeah. this knight like. <laughs> completely yeah, corralled. Couldn't, couldn't do anything. So mocking him, <laughs> <laughs> calling it a tavern the race, par race I see, part. I see we have another uh, guest. Well, join That's us. very exciting. Wonderful. Who will join us? Uh, he's good Adiban. fun. Yes. Yeah, he's good fun. He's, I think, already there. So uh, let's, absolutely. Uh, gonna get a big round of applause. Lascara, yeah. oh, you almost got it. <laughs> Tell us about your preparation. Take a seat. Hi. 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 Good to see you. Yeah. Here's a microphone. Well, that was an exciting game. At least yeah. we, we really enjoyed it. Text bites, text bites. I, I, I bite. <laughs> OK. No, so let's, uh, you seemed well prepared. Yeah, this is um, a line which I've been playing from the time I learned chess, so. Yeah, that's what Anish, he was just here, he said, I know you, uh, that he knows you well, and that you know everything about this line. Yeah, yeah, because, OK, he considers, uh, considers me the expert here, so. Yeah, I have been since I've been playing quite a while. I I think I have played this with both colors. So right. Yeah. So he played this with V A, uh, and okay, he did not have a great result. So I thought maybe I should try to go here. It was funny actually. Uh, bishop c4 e5. This is what he wanted to do in that game. Yeah. But he just messed up because for bishop e2 also he played e5 and he got into big trouble. That's what he told me. Oh, okay. So, but he said, okay, he did not have any idea about this knight f5. So, like, I'm practically forcing this piece sacrifice, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting uh, because he really does not have uh, any other go. He has to go for this piece sacrifice. So, it looks very nice. I'm giving up this. And this is still all home analysis. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tell you when it stops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Probably when you e started thinking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So bishop e7, so takes, takes. Yeah, rook h1. The point is, yeah, I'm just, uh, I have a pawn for the piece, but the thing is, this piece is a little bit stuck. Yeah. So, and it's not at all easy over the board, I felt. And uh, yeah, this felt like a natural choice during my preparations. So I was checking it. And this, again, uh, still preparation, because she'll let me know. Yeah, yeah actually, <laughs> King F8 uh, is the top choice of computer. Yeah, that's what we were uh, yeah. wondering, if he shouldn't just go over here. Maybe yeah, yeah, but King F, yeah, yeah, King F8, I will go F6, and this is how so the line. So if you play 
f6, uh, knight f6, queen e5, and knight g4, and queen h5. It's around equal. Uh, because, but actually, black is out of danger because he can just play bishop e6. So this is probably. But uh, during the game, it's not at all easy to decide on this. No. So he went here, which looks natural. So bishop here. This was preparation still. Uh, I just uh, felicitate this uh, rook c3, uh, rook f3, rook c3. Yeah. This was the point. Uh, so he goes here, looks natural. Yeah, here. My friend said that this is where I missed uh, the real chance. I should have played queen c4. Yeah, queen c4 yeah, was, uh, C4. was the move. Let's see. Yeah, but I really don't. OK, king f8, I guess. He has to play because queen b4 is really a nasty threat. Yeah, so king f8. King f8. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what I should do here. Maybe it's not so easy. Yeah? And a friend told you this? Yep. OK. And you trust that friend? Yeah. Okay, so that the, the, the should be uh, should be okay. Yeah. I don't know. It looks very complex. Um, yeah. Over the board, I couldn't really. I thought uh, I remember seeing this bishop a4 idea, but still, I had to figure out whether it was in this particular position. This plans were there with uh, rook c3, rook c7. Yeah, it is very complex. I have yeah. no idea what is happening. So he goes here. Yeah, actually, this is what he said he missed. Uh, he wanted to go here. But he, I had a feeling also he, that he missed this. So he was planning to take here. The point is I cannot take because of rook d8. And, uh, and, he has this and if you take check. on b7, he has queen yeah. g5 yeah, check. Queen yeah, queen g5 check. So, but the thing is, I have this intermezzo, queen c5 check. Uh, oh, so he has to go here, and now queen e3, very nice. And the point is, yeah, h6 is threatened, and also f6. I have, this, uh, I have the threat on e d7 bishop, so he, oh. he cannot. Uh, this is what he missed, he said. So, yeah, I had to go for this rook here now, just mm -hmm. giving an extra tempo. But surprisingly, bishop a4 was not the best, apparently. Already, maybe a big part of my advantage is gone, maybe. Okay, it was very slight, I think, uh, anyway. So, so you weren't, during the game, you weren't, you didn't feel like you were winning at any point? No, no, I did feel oh, like I was winning. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, maybe after the game, uh, they said, okay. Also, my opponent felt he was not doing not so bad. So okay. maybe they're yeah. right. <laughs> so rook g3, this was, I thought, uh, the decisive move because uh, I threaten on the way. Oh, yeah, I threaten bishop d7. This is a threat yeah. if he doesn't do anything. And queen c5 check followed by rook g8 uh, will be a mate. So b5. Actually, I was expecting this. Uh, the point is uh, bishop d7. Now he can take rook d7. Queen check and he's in time for this queen e7. Oh, yeah. But now I have like a really nice refutation. I can just play queen c4. This is what I was planning to do. It, threat is queen b4 check. And uh, if he goes a5, I just take. Yeah, the point is now I take with the rook first. I'm okay. in time, so yeah. which I could not do in the previous line. And then line. again check. And then check, yeah. and it's uh, queen e7, and rook, you get g8, rook g8. g8. And then the queen. So, yeah, this is what I was expecting, because after queen c4, yeah, it was funny, like, yeah, b6 is also the same. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I was even thinking of this, just to prevent this uh, b a5 idea, because if I get queen b4, it's over. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if he does this, I have this f6. So he uh, takes, and I come here. But the problem with queen a5, it just goes b6. And queen b4, check, knight c5, and oh, he's okay. just protecting yeah. everything. So... So yeah, king f5, that's why I, uh, queen c4 is winning, I think. But uh, I went for this b5, which I thought shouldn't shouldn't work because I, I have this, I mean, just I have this extra, I have this very strong queen. And uh, this material imbalance should favor me, I thought. But during the game, it was not at all easy. So rook c3, trying to just get something before he yeah. develops everything. So knight b6. Yeah, queen a7 check. Maybe yeah, I could play here, but also yeah, just he goes king f8 apparently. Somehow, yeah, yeah, I'm not able to do anything because this f5 also I have to protect. And this e, is, e pawn is like a, maybe a good passer in the later on. So I went for this queen a7. Yeah, this was very strong. I was expecting something like this, but okay, I just go here and rook d6 is coming. Yeah. So rook d7, and now, yeah, I have to do this. Because takes, I think he just takes the bishop and looks fine, more or less. Yeah, it was not easy. So rook c7. King d8, yeah. right? King d8, yeah. 
now I took. I was even thinking of t taking with this, but I think it just goes here and it's holding the entire position yeah. together. So thought maybe at least here I have this uh, threats on queen c7 check, I have this threat. And queen b6, uh, this was the point, I just take and mm. I have rook, rook c6. c6. And you win the, oh, uh, the h-pawn. Yeah. Uh, so like here I just take and okay. Should and then the g and the h-pawn yeah. should, yeah. uh, should do with the trick. Yeah. So yeah, queen d6 was fine, I think. Queen a8, yeah, this was a nice move, which I underestimated when I pl went for this line. Uh, knight b6 is queen c6, and I get the same line. Yeah. Like, uh, like he can do something like this, which was funny. Uh, now I go f6 check. Point is he cannot take because I just take, and I give a check yeah. and win the piece. So f6 check, he has to go here. Then I have some check like this, and OK. Rook f3, and OK, I should mate the king. Yeah. Because bishop f8 doesn't work because of g4. g4. So yeah, queen a, knight c5. Yeah, I just repeated once. Or I didn't, yeah, OK. I was planning to repeat yeah, once. Yeah, I, I just wanted to <laughs> I thought, OK, maybe I should just go for it. <laughs> then you yeah. decided to play on? Yeah, king e7. Uh, yeah, this was a mistake, actually. You should have gone here. That's what he said. I was planning f6, but I just missed that he can play here and get the king yeah. here. Because f6, the point is, yeah, uh, because the rook check is really nothing. He just comes here, and I can do this f6 for fun, but he can just take, I think, like uh, queen check, and he goes back. Yeah. And everything is more or less covered. So yeah, king is 7 then rook d3. Yeah, this is what he missed, I think. Now he was forced to go for this. Yeah, here I think this is where I missed somewhere. Like, because this felt like desperation yeah, for him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, where did this pawns? Yeah, yes, like a lot of. Maybe I should have been greedy and taken one of these pawns. <laughs> yeah. But I just thought, okay, I have time, so let me go for the king. <laughs> yeah. But it was probably not the best idea because, yeah, maybe I should take one of these pawns and try. But still, it was not at all clear. He starts push, but okay, should be. I think this is, should be the way. I think. Should he push his e pawn in the? Yeah, I don't know. It's complex, but uh, probably it should be winning somehow. Doesn't look easy at all, though. No. So queen c7, so e4. You were, of course, still in attacking yeah, mode. Actually, attacking one, mode. Yeah, actually, yeah. Oh. I think also one more idea was to rook here. I think this was also maybe. Yeah, actually, no. I missed the chance later on. Yeah, uh, here. Oh, yeah, the, I think rook c4. Was it possible? Yeah, I think here it was rook c4. Maybe the last chance to do something. Right. But c4 looked very tempting because I was like, uh, can just give a check and see if I check, it should be winning. Yeah. But I really, once I played, I realized you can just go e3. Uh, because c5, uh, queen d5 is what I. Okay, understand. and that holds. Yeah, then he's holding. And the you, point can't, is you can't I exchange and. The queen? Like no, that doesn't, no yeah. that doesn't work. No, I was looking at it because, okay, but the thing is, I do here. Yeah, knight e I, I can even do this. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. You don't win the pawn. No, I can do this, but okay, I'm not, I, I don't think he is in trouble anymore. He no. can just go f5, f4, just hold on to the pawn. Yeah, so, yeah, here I was looking at this. This was my intention, but king here. The point is, king d is nice because I have this c6. Problem. And e2? e2, then I take with the queen. So he has to take, and I take, sorry. I take. Uh, and e1, queen, check, yeah. but you can't stop the queen from Yeah, promoting. like I go here, uh, I can't give any check, right? So he goes here, and king a5. And then I go b4, and I queen the pawn. <laughs> He cannot really stop it. You can't, you can't do anything about it? Yeah. No. Well, uh, you're also promoting with check. Unfortunately, king e5 is just working. Queen check, he just goes here. And the point is, once you get knight e5, I don't know who is playing for win. Yeah. Because in this pawn is, His king is safe. Yeah, his king on queen h4 check also. Like he, the king is very safe here. And once yeah. he gets the knight, OK, I have to be really careful. because Now it's your is, king getting yeah, yeah. in trouble. So king e5, I was even checking this, but just king e4. and it's. I think. Well, he defended real uh, well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, every time, yeah. Do you feel <laughs> sad or do you feel it's a it's okay result to draw after this game? Yeah, yeah, no, I wanted to win, of course, because, yeah, I just wanted to be on plus two. <laughs> 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 what pity, yeah. 
also it looked quite close, so that's why I was, I was maybe a little bit upset because it just got him into preparation, but somehow I think he defended quite well afterwards. Yeah. Fair result. I saw three more rounds. Yeah. Carlson, Geary, uh, Report. Geary, Report, yeah. So, yeah, and you, you started with, yeah, you've uh, started with one out of four. Yeah, and now something like that, right? yeah. And now you have so many great points, so many points, so many great attacking games. You're really a crowd favorite, so yeah, is that is that a, have you always played this way? Yeah, if I get a chance, I play like this, but also I I can play boring chess sometime, but... Well, don't <laughs> don't, don't show it in Vikings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. <laughs> not a good idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's a good result. And uh, yeah. what do you expect? You're playing Carlsen tomorrow, I think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and is it tomorrow? I I'm not sure. Uh, sorry, tomorrow's a rest day. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, you need yeah, yeah. I need, I need some time. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. already I played like a long game yesterday, so mm, I really yeah. want a break. <laughs> <laughs> I was like clearly suffering the entire game, but I managed to make a draw yesterday. So. Oh, yeah. And how yeah. will you prepare a black game against a world champion? How will you prepare? Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for quite some time. Yeah, really? So, yeah. I mean, ever since I saw the world championship match in 2013, it was in my hometown, Chennai. Yeah. So every day I used to go there and used to dream that maybe one day if I can play with them, it would be great. And like now, yeah, four years later, we are in that moment. Oh, that's so. great. So two days from now is a dream, yeah. dream come true for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think it's a dream for many people to play with them. And, um, and in your dream, do you beat him? Mm, I, I actually, thing is, yeah, one of my friends had a dream and he's, he's told me the result. So, yeah, I'll, I'll tell it afterwards. And what's the result? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, later on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Well, uh, thank you for, for joining us. Yeah, and, uh, sure. Best of luck two days from now and enjoy the rest. Yeah. yeah. Can I get a big round of applause? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thanks. Great game. Well, that was a Very great explanation. Yeah, so are we just really was... lucky that everyone comes by to show their games? Yes. I feel it's a really nice round, and uh, it really is. It's, good it's, explanation. It's wonderful when the players come and share their thoughts with the audience. Exactly. And, well, Ariban has been a frequent guest, and I really thank him very profusely for uh, joining us. And not so, oh, uh, some five things, and a half out of ten. Five and a half out of ten. He's That's, a great score. Some things have gone, has, have happened. At Elianov Yiwei, let's see, King yes. G4, as expected. King yes. H2. Also as expected. Check. Yes. Let's just say with every move we expected it. Right? Well, we, we were wondering if the, if the queen belonged on D3 or E4, exactly. right? Exactly. Like a repositioning of the queen. Oh, but he now goes back and forth. Okay, so after King H2? I can see, obviously, a repetition, but can black do more? That's the key well, question. Well, can black, yeah, if you play king h2, but right now it's, of course, white to move. Right. What if you play another move? I'm worried if I play, yes, king h3. I'm worried that the king and the queen are going to combine somehow to deliver a checkmate. I am. Um, the bishop a5, let's put that Bishop a5, oh, that's so a, we haven't seen that before. No, so in this case, queen e4, you, queen f3 can be both met comfortably by queen f2. Wow. Yes, and, and that's a big wow. That's a turnaround. Oops. Whoops. That's a whoopsie daisy. And he played bishop b6, so he played the first part of the plan. Right. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's the second part of the plan? <laughs> no, the Waiting second part for is the no, king a to yeah, come king to h3. Yeah, king h3 and then bishop a5. Right. So here the problem is if we capture the pawn on g3. Yeah, let's say you capture. 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 capture yeah, the, check. Uh, sorry, uh, check. Right. And now the a pawn is a little bit of a difficulty. Uh, more than a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, this would be uh, seppuku. Suicide yeah. for white. But this is this has been an odd game because if we look at this position, we and felt like black uh, was on top. Absolutely. Sacrificed his rook. Right. And suddenly this was not winning. And, right. And we know uh, Yiwei as the calculating monster. Absolutely. People refer to him. Absolutely. Meant as a compliment. 
And then a little bit later, we have this position, and white might be winning. Very easily, uh, indeed, if we, if we uh, see that black's king is not the fearsome attacker on the h3 yeah. square, as well as the f3 square, it might be time to... Well, one more attempt. Yeah, th yeah. this doesn't work. Uh, queen d1, probably because of king f2. Maybe. Yes, exactly, Tex. And then the pawn on e2 is about to be captured. Exactly. That's our pr pride and joy. If yeah. we lose that pawn, that's, that's bad, 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 bad. Ooh. Ooh. Well, if Elianov wins this game, he also gets uh, half a point behind So. Right. He came to this round in second, second place, place, a shared second place. And That's So won. Yes. So. And Carlson didn't win, so then he would be a, he won't, it won't be a shared second place anymore. Right. And we have to go back to the first round where, as it turned out, Magnus uh, played against Wesley in the first round. That game was a draw. Yeah. And remarkably enough, in the last round, the 13th and final round in Vikonze, it will be Magnus and Sergei Karyakin, yeah, that a is, repeat I think from every, New York. Everyone is looking forward to that game. Definitely. Uh, First classical game after the world championship match. Exactly. We have but that would be a huge turnaround should Pavel uh, succeed in that game. Yeah. And in this game... Yeah, this, uh, is this game, we left it here. Right. And this, is, uh, this, this happened, rook b2. Exactly. The move you predicted. Right. Rook behind the pawn. And we just push the pawn as fast as we can up the board. And thanks also to the pawn on e4, uh, we can nibble with king e2, king e3, and takes. Yeah. And that will be a winning king and pawn endgame. Yeah, and also when he plays... Rook before, before you just move your king over. Exactly. And king d2 and king c3 will be on white's agenda. Exactly. Yes. And you'll have to go somewhere. Back and we and push. And the pawn just starts, or, or you maybe first pick up this pawn. Or you uh, first push, then pick up the e4 pawn. Later. Later. First things first. <laughs> yeah, so this, this we... We really feel that Sergei's in the driver's forces, is, we feel yes. like it's, uh, it's going to be a win. Exactly. Let's see, okay, we have uh, a tweet coming in. Mm. That's always exciting. Yes, what, what will the tweetosphere? Can the I tweet sphere. Howard tweet Staunton, <laughs> who is uh, the tweetosphere. <laughs> yeah, what does the tweetosphere say? Uh, Mr. Aronian, it's from Howard Staunton. Nice that he's still alive and tweeting. Exactly. Mr. Aronian plays with the utmost foresight, soundness of judgment, and nicety in detail. Yes, again, when uh, Levon is on his game, he is just a remarkable force. A pleasure to watch his uh, games, most definitely. Well, we have some standings as of right now, so with two games still in progress. Wesley So 7, Aronian 6, Carlsen 6, Adiban, really, really nice job, 5.5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Elianov, well, maybe going to make it to 6.5. Should he... Uh, and we have just seen this move F5, F5. by the way. And that uh, cross table where we're standing there, if you notice that Wesley So is the only player in the whole field, both in the Masters and the Challengers. Who's undefeated, right? Who's undefeated, yes. Stands alone yeah. at the top of the mountain, undefeated. Nice little picket fence of points against the lowest yeah. standing players in the field. He's good at that stuff. Yes, he is. And he's going to play Andrejka Nepomniachtchi and Yivai. Okay, well, still challenges definitely. remain. F5 has been F5. played. F5. And now, okay. Well, our plan was Bishop A5. Yes, I'm still not quite so sure myself, Tex. I, somehow I feel it's nicer to have the bishop on F2. Yeah, but, but you want to... Uh, Move you your queen to f2, right? Exactly. I wanted to move. So I want. So if you now, I mean now, because you're. And I wanted the blockade with the bishop, right? So let's say bishop a5. Right. So here, I don't know. Um, 
Queen e3 check gets met by queen f2, of course. Yeah. That's the whole setup that white wants so that he can withdraw his bishop. And, well, he advanced his pawn. Should we continue with the advance, yeah, the march of the pawn? Yes, takes, takes. With the pawn, I am assuming. Yeah, do you take back or do you have uh, some... You have Clever. to take back, probably. Yes. Yeah, let's take back. Queen f2. And the problem is if you go queen d1 check, bishop e1, queen takes a4, I'm taking on e2, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking that before you get into this, you want to put your pawn on f3. The problem is if I put my pawn on f3, uh, uh, yes, then after bishop e1, there's a queen g3 check. Oh, that's very annoying. Which will be very annoying, exactly. Yeah, so let's see, he did make a move, I think. A bishop a5, b6 played. Whoa. Wow. So he is following that plan, Elianov is, bishop a5. Right. He wanted to go queen f2 and bishop e1, and this was the way for white to disturb that. But so let's say that if, a he, pawn? if he takes. Yes. And, hmm. Well, king h3, bishop a5 once more. Queen f3 is met by queen f2, and that's it. That's all she wrote. So maybe there's something stronger if he just takes on b6? Well, he needs something really, really excellent. Can you go <laughs> after the a pawn if you take queen c4? Okay, bishop a5. I'll fall for it. Because I'm taking with on e2 with check. Yeah, so if you take from this, this, and you take with check, then right. it's even. I'm almost afraid that. Yeah, it's going to be Black checkmate at some point, right? Exactly. Black's king might get checkmated. Something yeah. like queen h2 check here, Tex. If you go to f3, just for the audience. Oh. Yeah, and I'll check you on g2, and I'll check you on c7 after king f4 or something. Yeah. And. I feeling that it's mating yeah. net is beginning. Yeah, but yeah, okay, but if can you get out? Oh, can you get out? Oh. Well, queen to the e2 check, or is that the same position? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that is. Then it is. But it's okay. You can repeat moves in this analysis. <laughs> exactly. Well, then bishop g bishop uh, bishop e1 check yeah, bishop, will be good enough. Yeah, exactly. Actually, is that that is mate. It's getting mate. Be, or, yes. Yeah, and you have to give the queen up. Or there was queen f3 and queen oh, g2 okay. mates. Yeah. You found the one square, <laughs> the one check in the position that was not checkmate. Let's see. Here I'll check you on e1, and maybe I'll just push the b pawn if I yeah, can. Yeah, that should also be winning, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so we're B6. seeing lots of wins for white, even after the creative or crafty b6 bishop takes b6 we haven't we haven't yet found a way for way ye to save maybe queen d1 i don't know this looks weird maybe even no, king, king f2. f2 no we keep yes the king f2 move is excellent or let's see so bishop takes b6 yes one more time king, king f2, f2 yes because now you can also probably not no, you can also not take here. You st again, yeah. after that's a check. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's always with check. Mm. He hasn't captured yet. He has ten minutes left, Elianov. Where he still has half an hour. He played b6 instantly. That could also be a desperate thing. Like, okay, exactly. I'm just throwing my yeah. my pawn in there. Exactly. The last great act of defiance. I also feel it's kind of the only move to take on uh, b6. Yes. Well winning attempt, right? You want to... No, he, he just took he, on b6. And he took on b6. Um, Do you think, yeah, well... I was thinking maybe where he has some instant reply. Yes. Like, here we go. Here we go. Something extra special is needed here. <laughs> yeah. This is very... Uh, it, it's a confounding game. From, F4. From the point of view that 
way he very quickly sacrificed a rook. And yeah. as you said, the monster calculator, you know, he's got it all worked out. And it's remarkable because there was no reason no. other than it's winning. So we're, we are confronted by this uh, impressive yeah, like, okay. rook sacrifice. Yeah. So, and, and we then were we can impressed. Yeah. find the win. Like, what's going on? So f4, quickly, g takes, g takes f4. Remember earlier in our sessions, you were even contemplating g4, tossing away the pawn yeah. in order to open up black's king's position. So you're very, very pleased now that these pawns have been <laughs> traded. And definitely. OK, so now I can see one possibility. Might go something like bishop a5, king h3, queen f2, and maybe there's a perpetual check now with queen g6, king h1, and queen e4. So there, well, there's still work maybe, to be done. Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. So there's so still work to be done. If you play bishop a5. Maybe bishop a5 is king, king h3, we queen c3. Ooh. Oops, excuse me. That was my hitting my microphone. Apologies. Um, you've got to go queen. Yeah, you have to. Uh, and now my king can. I'll get, I'll get a rook. Okay, I'll take it. And now my king will avoid the perpetual check by crossing over to the e file. There'll be no perpetual check. Okay, so king, king h3 doesn't work. No. Oh boy, oh boy. F3, F3 doesn't work either, I'm afraid. Queen f2 with that same idea of bishop e1 and queen g3, an idea we pointed out in a different position. And this also doesn't work. Queen check. Queen check, I'm back. And bishop e1. Okay. Oops. Wow, a real turnaround. A real in this turnaround. This game. Because when he, again, you, the calculated, like the draw he found against Anish Giri. Yes. Was so deep. Oh, and fantastic. So he is capable of calculating that far. Oh, See, Kayakin certainly. is still the same position after Rook B2. Right. So I'll. We don't have, yeah, I we don't, don't see the players no, on the webcam. No, let's uh, go back to Elian. I think it's exactly. still the same position. Exactly. And by the way, again, a shout out. Uh, had, did you get a chance to visit the playing hall? The beautiful oh, ballroom yeah. Yeah, with, the, it is beautiful. with the, with the um, chandeliers. All in, it's I like just that Aronian said he did feel uh, uh, inspired yes. also because they all, everywhere, they all visited you as well, visited a museum, the Frans Hals Museum, exactly. with beautiful paintings, yes. them playing in a beautiful venue. Anish Gier also you said feel that like he... feel like honored guests. Yeah, yeah, right, and Anish also said that he really likes the events, the playing in different cities. Yes. You really feel there's something going on. Right. It's good for chess, good for the tournament. Right. When I was a kid and I was reading about the Max Erva Alexander Alekhine matches, what really shocked me was that Max Erva was the amateur player. He was a teacher, a math yeah. teacher. And literally, they played in places like Harlem mm -hmm. and Arnhem and Amsterdam. And he would go early in the morning to school, do his lectures. Then he would get on a train, correct the homework of the students, come and play the yeah. world championship match game, get on the train, go back home, and repeat. Wow. And won the match, which is... That is... Superhuman. That's unbelievable an to amateur me. world champion. Exactly. And right. I think he kept his uh, professorship, teachership, mm -hmm. virtually his whole career before he became the president of the FIDE yeah, and took a, on new responsibilities. As a world champion, he was also still a teacher. It's like remarkable. A math teacher. Hard, uh, hard to believe, but, yeah. that, but it, he really was remarkable. Well, I really like champion. his books. You yes. can see he's a good teacher. Yes. The way he... Uh, he was a prolific author too, yeah. right? I mean, maybe 50 books or some amazing number of books that he... So a very industrious man. We're very proud of Max Oewe in the Netherlands. With good, with good cause. H5 was played. What else? I mean, because otherwise... In the otherwise, Lufkaryak in Andrijkin. Right. 
Unfortunately for Dimitri, this will not save him. Captures on h5, king will go to h6, pawn will go to b5. Oh, well, this is not so, right. No, that's not that clear. I, I, I mistimed it. What I wanted to do was go b4, king takes, b5, king g5. And in my mind's eye, I was playing rook b5. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah like you, my pawn was on you b6. You already uh, played this move, uh, rook b5 as well. Okay. I swindled two extra tempi for white. Sorry about that. That's okay. So h5 takes king, and now we have to do something maybe a little bit different. I played b4. He Immediately. Didn't, yeah, he didn't take on... Oh, I see what he wants to take. b5, king h6, b6. And then he has your plan after and all. And then he has the right setup, exactly. And then that's over. Uh, g3, king e2, king e3, and etc. as we write or yeah. say. Yeah. So this is also, this doesn't do anything? Well, you could walk into my arms, <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my, my loving embrace, yeah. uh, e3, Let's and see. rook takes e3 mate, yes. And g3, just all the desperate attempts? Yes, that looks like a reasonable desperado. Um, here, maybe f3. <laughs> Again, I like that you start whispering when yes, you're not really sure. Like, okay, I, it's kind of like <laughs> a half, 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 three? Anyone? half closed eye. King f4. Okay, that's annoying. Well, I'll take it, of course. You'll take. And king, king takes. E2. And now I got you. I'm just playing yeah. with an extra rook, essentially. My rook is meaningful. Yeah. Yours is just blockading. And yeah, because you can go after the g3 pawn now, yes which has always been my intention was to use, or Sergei's intention was to use this b6 pawn to get into a king and pawn endgame, essentially. Yeah, and this is over. So, uh, the current position tax? Current position is, is b4. b4 takes. The rest is analysis. Ah, the less is. b4. Right. Yeah, so you have nothing to take else. B5. b5. Nothing else. b6, b6 king. And Rook. Else. I liked your g3 attempt. That was pretty... And you played f3. Well, I'm not even and sure that's I, the most clever. Yeah, because if okay, I take, 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 take... And king... And, and also, but if I play g6, for instance... It's the same it's thing. The You're same getting thing. into a king and pawn end game. That you just lose. Cause that you, you just lose because... And that's really... You really see the, the force of this, this rook behind the pawn. Right? Yes. That's so strong. Exactly. Exactly. We have a great... Problemist, uh, originally from Hungary, Paul Benko, and uh, he, uh, for decades, had this Benko's Bafflers. And over the years, it's like each year he makes a column, it's a problem where your rook belongs behind the passport. Oh, okay. So it's like he just pounds <laughs> you with this knowledge that your rooks belong behind passports. And he, he does it in very, very creative and alluring ways. What? I just want to see if the... We had one game left in, in the, the Gwen Jones game. Challengers, that was well, the young the, uh, Chinese lady exactly. was nursing an advantage with the exchange. With black, but it's, it's not Some, over yet. Somehow, Gawain managed to This was the position where we... Thought yes, it was winning. Yes, and ah, queen h7 king. So yeah. he was able Double to. Attack. He was able to at least smuggle one pawn. And this, this is, is getting. Position. This is getting harder and harder. Uh, kind of echoes of the game between Baskara and Ian today, where the extra exchange didn't really make itself felt. Yeah. So it could still be a... A draw for a draw. Let's see. And let's go let's back, go to, back the to the Pavel. And do oh, we have any questions from our audience? We, they were been remarkably quiet earlier. I had expected some questions about the players. And but you know, for example, Anish Giri, for me, is one of those players that really stands an excellent chance of one day becoming challenger. Yeah. 
And should he qualify to a championship match against Magnus or whomever, I really think that his chances of doing well, as well as Sergei, and maybe even better, are really good. Yeah. I really am impressed by this young man, Anish Giri. And he just, he isn't quite hitting all of his gears. No, that's what we talked about. You're right, right? yeah, too many draws. He's and, close to being... But he would be a formidable match player. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Uh, tournaments, he's having a little bit of a hiccups, but if you think about not last year's uh, Grand Chester cycle, but the year before, he went through undefeated plus yeah, five, yeah, and he really yeah. deserved to win it, you know, in fact. So he had a, not, not the greatest chess year last year, I think, but still, no, okay, I, still I think acceptable results. No, I think it was results. like the candidates was something special. That was a, a tournament in Moscow. It was an eight-player double round robin tournament of 14 rounds. Remarkably, he had three winning positions that I can recall. He didn't win any of the no. games. In fact, every single game was draws. a draw. Yeah. And that was like unprecedented in candidates' history that so many uh, games were drawn. And he was teased about it a lot, and he yeah. enjoyed those teases, yeah. by the way. You know, they had this fantastic uh, one where there was a white king on f7 and a black king on h8 and it was like magnus would play queen g8 checkmate hikaru played queen g7 checkmate and anish played queen g6 stalemate <laughs> <laughs> you know 14 draws but that was a goody goody yeah is this the current position this is the current position bishop c5 so no bishop a5 but c5 okay that's a su surprising move? Is that, is that the move we expected, Tex? I no, can't we expected know. bishop a5. Right. The reason we expected the move bishop a5, and we'll just go back to that move for a moment. Yeah, he has three minutes left, by the way. That's maybe good to point it's out. It's Pavel. Pavel, but yes. he has uh, half an hour left. The reason we were considering the position after king h3 with a perpetual check as the threat, and we wanted to be able to meet this with the move queen c3, right? Yeah. This is what we thought. So bishop c5, king, and now the idea is queen g6 check, and by the yeah. way, there's a mate on g2. Uh, what's going on after king h3? I'm, I'm blind, I'm missing something. Let's see. Again, I'm seeing queen g6 check and queen g2 checkmate as the threat. Oh my. Did he really play bishop c5? Or are, you, are, you, are you messing around with us? I don't think so. <laughs> After seven minutes of his 10. Oh. And king h3 is played. Of course. Well, hold on. Yeah. I see the light board. I don't know if king h3 has been played oh. or not. Oh, maybe it's not. Sorry. Right. Take back. Take back? Is that, Is that allowed? Yes. Wait, <laughs> it, this, these are the moves. He played queen c4 and bishop back. Wait a minute. I don't get any of the moves now. So he took on f4. Right. Bishop c5. Why didn't he play king h3? Indeed. Let us see once more. Why didn't he play king h3? What is, what are we missing? My brain hurts. I don't, I don't understand. Uh, queen G6, so if we, just put it on the board. B6, Queen G6 check. And if we play King to H1 or King yeah, to F2. But I feel here, can't you even play something like Queen yes. F3? But this is with chat. Queen goes back. Yeah, but but what what do you play? Oh, you mean Queen F two? Queen F two, and I promote till a rook. I of got course, you. Rook. Of course. And it's checkmate. It's checkmate. So, uh, ah, King F two. Oh, you. thank you. Thank you. We're having a blind spot. Yeah. You know. King F2, thank goodness, thank otherwise you. it would just be 
Yes, where we're suffering. Do you want to sit here? <laughs> yes, uh, <So> welcome. <laughs> Yes. So okay. Queen C4, obviously Queen C4, because King H3 is a ridiculous move, uh, of course, loses after King F2. Two. Well, yes. So, um, Shame on you. So let's see, Bishop B6. Is that what happened? And now the Queen returned to D3. To D3. So now he can once play again Bishop, Bishop A5. A5 opportunity. Well, he has two minutes, so let's, let's see what happens. Okay, so the reason that he didn't play bishop a5 is because there's a queen e3 check. Mm -hmm. Okay, then our king is, in, is on the wrong spot. So bishop a5 check, and we thought queen here, right? Right. So is there some queen c? No. 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 We're on the wrong square again. But this is this is tense because he has again he has a minute and a half. He has to decide: Am I going for a repetition of moves? Right. Or am I going for bishop a5? Right. I feel this is the moment in a chess game where a chess player has the most adrenaline ever. Everything's right. Pumping. Everything is pumping. <laughs> yes. And you saw a kind of a nervousness. He plays bishop c5. Bishop c5. So we're, again, we're missing things, Tex. We're, <laughs> no. I think it's been a long we're day. We're not missing anything. Bishop yet. c5. And he repeats the move. Well, then Wesley So is one point ahead of Carlsen, Yivai, and Elyanov. Right. Should this so be drawn? So that would be drawn? a point lead if this is drawn. With three rounds to go. So let's count how many times that bishop c5, queen c4, bishop b6, queen d3, bishop c5, queen c4. This is the position. Again, and he has one minute C4, left. Yes. Oh my. Hmm. But now he has to go to b6 and queen d3. Is that still, is that already a threefold repetition? It's getting close. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we have 50, uh, 50 seconds. I'm very, very, I don't know very how long confused. this broadcast will go on for, <laughs> but I want to say uh, that I've enjoyed our time together. Oh, uh, oh as always, Tex, it's, it's brilliant being here. And again, it's just a fantastic facility. I love the theater. Yeah. I like the acoustics. And great games. And great games. Great games today. We've been yes. uh, very lucky with the games. Yes. So let's see, he plays bishop b6 back, and, and where he is probably right away going to play queen d3. But, but can he claim draw? When let's see, but then he has to make the move, stop the clock, and claim a draw. And but, he, oh, he just makes the move. So now we have, again, we have Elianov less than a minute. If he plays bishop c5, it's a draw. Exactly. If he plays bishop a5, we think he might be winning, but we're not, we don't dare to make any calls anymore. Exactly, right? exactly. So this is exciting. He has, he has 40 seconds left. He stops the clock, claims and the draw. And he is the one to claim and the draw. And they shake hands, and it's yes. a draw. He doesn't even say what move he's playing. He just stops the clock. It's like, well... That's it. It's a draw. It's a draw. I really wonder if Bishop A5... Would have won the would game. Would have won, but this is an exciting game. So, Truly. last game that's still going on, Karyakin Andraikin, and we can go back a few moves just a few to, moves see. to see what happened. Right. Let's see, b4 takes, takes. king, also right away king, no, he's, he's not running yet. Okay. Oh, yes. Because otherwise your king gets to e4. Right? Exactly. Right. g3, that doesn't change the fact that it's going to be two pawns on the king's yeah, side. Two, this is and he played the move king, king f5. f5. And now mm. I would like to play. Time to start running with your pawn, right? Yes. Exactly so. b5. And if king. Rook or rook. rook if rook fine. b6, you play king d4. Yes. So king e5. b6. b6. f5. Yeah, now I am going to wait a move. Rook check, perhaps. Check. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. You get the Sorcy. Wow. And you get the? Pepsi Light. Diet Pepsi? Diet What's going Pepsi. On? I have to watch like my... Like you need to drink diet. Uh, my girlish figure. 
All right. So, uh, so that's it. Are we and just then gonna we're going to play G3? Yes, I think that that's exactly what it is going King to be G4 and, and King or G4. Or G4, okay. G4. So, with these results, we now know our leader, Wesley So, is one point ahead. One point ahead. We'll take another look as we get the cross table up. But we're going to be the last three rounds tomorrow will be a rest day. Yeah. And what will you do? Um, rest. <laughs> <laughs> probably do some reading, probably reanalyze the games, uh, put them through a chess engine, All right. try to make sure that my ideas were really, I wasn't faking, you know, <laughs> <laughs> bluffing, but they were actually insightful. And uh, fortunately for me, I don't have to prepare for any of the opponents. True. So that's a you nice thing. You just have to prepare for all 14 of them. Exactly. So, well, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if we'll get the cross table up. That's or very coming soon. very, yeah, very so soon. Very exciting last three rounds, I think. Yes. Would you put your uh, American dollars on Wesley So? Yes. Yeah. The man's good as gold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's especially a this... point one. lead and just yes. very strong impression. It's, um, it's not only a point lead, but it's just the overall impression yeah. that he gives. It's this like regal, knowledgeable, well, here I didn't go there because it yeah. was a little bit complicated, so I went here instead because I knew I would always have a better position. But I, mean, I, yeah, yeah. But I feel also when you just look at his games or just how he acts, it's almost like how, what, how Magnus was like, what he was yes. like a few years ago or yes. maybe still is. Yes. But that same confidence and that... It, it, it's kind of scary when it comes to you so easily, right? It's, 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 just, it's just beautiful that like, they just know. And it's a sport, chess is a sport where you know, you think that, you know, you need all of this experience uh, when it's really about peace harmony. And if you can just get your pieces to all work together, yeah. it, it, it works out great. So here is we have the, our the standings, cross the cross table. Oh. Yes. So again, that's four people, one point behind So, Aronian Carlson, Elianov, UI. Right, and again, Wesley So has played against Levon as well as Magnus. He's still playing Yvay. He played Pavel. That was a crazy yeah, that was, yeah. uh, draw. So maybe so, the Chinese uh, uh, youngster will just go for it again. So that could That, that could, could still, well decide right? the outcome of the tournament. Wow. What an event it's been. Definitely. So it's a good time to thank you yeah. all. Please, thank you, thank you very yeah. much for Thanks coming. For coming. <laughs> it was really... Our pleasure. I and really felt like a guest of honor. Right? Yes. And thank you all for watching. Indeed. It's been, uh, it's been fun. It's a great event. Yes, sir. Text. Good luck rest of the tournament. Thank you so much, sir. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. Have I a, will. Have a great night wherever you are in the world. Maybe it's morning, maybe it's afternoon. Have a great anything. Good.